everyone, it's Bryony. So this video has been highly, highly requested recently, which is my review, or rather a video on my experience with using the contraceptive patch. So I'm not gonna go into like a lot of detail about the patch itself in this video. Um, if you wanna know anything about it, you can go and look that up online. Um, if you're in the UK, there's the NHS website has a really good description and overview of the contraceptive patch and how it works. So if you're interested in learning that sort of stuff, then you can go and look that up yourself. But this video is gonna be uh, sort of my, talking about my experience with it, how I found it, side effects, all that kind of stuff. So if that's what you're interested in seeing, then keep on watching. So first of all, if you're new to my channel, a little bit of backstory. I have a condition called Lyme disease, which basically was given to me when I was bitten by a tick. I don't know when this happened, but I've been sick since I was 10 years old and it could have happened at any point, either right back then or during that time. Um, and it's made me really ill, namely made me really, really fatigued gave me problems with nausea, muscle pain, like memory problems, all sorts of stuff. But recently it's been quite good. I've actually managed to get pretty much on top of it recently with diet and supplements. I think I've finally found the right balance, um, which is really exciting and also a little bit nerve wracking for me going on this pill, not the pill, sorry, the patch, because of the potential for things to go wrong. The reason I personally decided to try the patch is not actually for contraceptive purposes. I don't need contraception at this point in time. Uh, however, it was to see if it made a difference to my really painful periods. I have a condition called adenomyosis, which is basically a rarer form of endometriosis. With endometriosis, it affects around one in 10 women. Adenomyosis affects around one in 100. So like I said, it's just a rarer form basically, but it means the lining of my uterus has actually grown into my uterine muscle. Um, and it makes it incredibly painful each month and I also get uh, quite a few clots and a relatively heavy period. I wouldn't term, term it to be very heavy because I'm certainly not soaking through pads and needing to change every hour or anything, but like there's a decent amount of blood there and I wouldn't call it a light period by any means. So when I decided to try out a form of birth control to see if it would help with my period pain, I did a lot of research. Because of the fact that with my Lyme disease, I have reacted badly to hormones in the past, I didn't want anything that was even semi-permanent. So nothing that would need a doctor to stop it. For example, with an IUD um, or an implant in your arm, um, I just wasn't cool with either of them, which, it's a bit of a problem because the method that the gynecologist, my gynecologist recommended that was best for adenomyosis is a marina, um, which is basically an IUD that goes into, well, an IUD basically sits in your uterus um, and it stops you getting pregnant and the marina is the hormonal one so it releases hormones to stop you um, ovulating and stuff. But I, because I haven't had hormones for quite a while and because they went so badly wrong last time, I wanted to try a method that I could stop instantaneously if something started to go really wrong. Um, I didn't want to have to, you know, put a marina in and then, you know, something, I start getting really sick and I have to go back to the doctors and get them to remove it or make an appointment, all that kind of stuff. I wanted to just be able to stop it. So I started looking at my options then. Well, the depot shot, that's too high a concentration of hormones for me to have at any one time, so that was ruled out. Um, the pill I can't have because um, I've been told specifically that I cannot ingest hormones because of my Lyme, that's how I reacted last time, and also my Lyme specialist said out of the question. Um, and the gynecologist said that that wouldn't really help with my period pain. Plus, with Lyme disease, one of the things it can often do is upset your stomach, so you get diarrhea quite frequently, and you can also be sick quite frequently too. Um, fortunately for me, not so much anymore, but if it happened one month I was really bad, then that would throw it off and that wouldn't work. So that kind of left me with the patch. There is the Nuva ring and a few other things, but the ones that are really sort of easier to get here, especially with the NHS, which is free, you know. Um, for where I personally live, it's kind of different depending on your area as well. Um, I was actually able to get the patch, and I looked into this and I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. So the patch does work similar to the pill, but it's not ingested, so I am able to have it. Also, it still works if you have, if you're sick or you have diarrhea or anything, um, and it contains progesterone and estrogen. So it works in the same way as the combined pill. Um, it basically stops you ovulating. So I was able to use this for a month, however, I am not on the patch anymore because unfortunately it didn't agree with me. So um, the first day I put this on, if you wanna see the day I actually got this, you can go back and see um, my period vlog 49 and you will be able to uh, see me getting this and putting it on for the first time. 
That particular time I stuck it on my back, which I quickly realized was a bad decision um, because it was A, a little bit sensitive there on my lower back, so I got a bit itchy with it. Um, so I had a uh, fear that I might be allergic to the adhesive, which is quite common, but I wasn't because the next week I moved it to my thigh and that was way better and also stopped catching on things and I didn't feel it as much on my thigh, so that was good. Um, so before I, hang on, let me backtrack a little bit. Before I put this on, I got the Evra pill. It comes in like a little box like this. Let me cover up some details on the front. There you are. And um, the instruction leaflet, or the warning leaflet, I should say, inside is humongous. I will give you an example right now. Just open it up. We're going. Still going. It's double-sided too. This is all the potential side effects, how to use all that stuff in <laughs> this sheet. And one of the things that really worried me was uh, the fact that this can uh, cause some women to get clots, blood clots. Um, now, we don't have a history of blood clots in my family, which is why I was allowed to have this pill, because you have to speak to a doctor to check you haven't got any problems like that. But um, knowing my body, I wouldn't have ruled it out. And the other thing was, let me see, yes, the risk of developing a blood clot in a year. Women who are not using a combined hormonal pill patch slash ring and are not pregnant. It's about two out of every 10,000 women. Women using a combined contraceptive pill, um, it's about five to seven out of every 10,000 women. And women using Evra, it's about six to 12 out of every 10,000 women. So it's not a huge number, but it is an increase. So it's something to bear in mind um, and definitely something you need to take into account. This is the bit that worried me. The possible side effects, very common side effects, as in may affect more than one in 10 women, headaches, nausea, and breast tenderness. I definitely got slight breast tenderness, and I noticed this because I don't usually get it with my period. It's a very common um, like PMS symptom for a lot of women before their periods start or when they're on their period, they get like tender breasts. For me, I've never experienced that, but I did get it with this. Um, Nausea, that really worried me because I'm very prone to nausea. Like, I will get nauseous at anything. Um, but fortunately, I didn't get nauseous and I also didn't get headaches, which is the other common one. So that was good. But then this one really worried me. Common side effects may affect up to one in 10 women. There's quite a few things down here. Dizziness, which I get all the time as well. Stomach ache and bloating, vomiting and diarrhea. But the one that really caught my attention was this. Changes in menstrual bleeding pattern, uterine cramps, painful periods and vaginal discharge. And I'm like, well, this thing's supposed to help with painful periods. So the fact that it could potentially make it worse uh, did worry me because I thought I can't, I can't deal with worse than what my periods currently are. So please work for me. And um, fortunately, it did. And I'll go on to that in a second. So after I'd say when I first put this patch on, I didn't experience any problems with it. But very quickly, like within the first few days, I started to notice my energy levels sort of gradually decreasing. Um, now, because of the Lyme disease, that's sometimes common for me anyway, so I wasn't sure like whether it was just the patch or whether it was actually my health in general, because that can happen sometimes. So I left it, you know, I didn't touch it. And um, I switched it at second week, and then I started to notice that the energy was worse when I first put the patch on, so when the hormones were like at their most potent. It, my energy levels would be so, so low. And it actually was so bad, it started to interfere with like daily tasks. I really struggled to even like do my emails for my business and stuff, so it was really, really bad. In fact, it was so bad that I did debate around the second week whether or not I should put the third patch on or whether I should just stop there. But I decided I wasn't too bad. I hadn't had a what I would call a relapse of my health. So I decided I could still keep going for a bit longer. And I put the third patch on. I want. I really wanted to do a full month if I could, so I stuck with it. And yeah, my energy was definitely again low at the beginning. Increased a bit towards the end, but was still very low. And then when I took it off, it took a good like three days for my period to start. So when you're on um, any form of hormonal contraception that actually stops you ovulating, you don't have a period. You have what's called a withdrawal bleed. Um, so you're not actually menstruating properly. But uh, it took three days for that withdrawal bleed to start, and when it did, it was still painful, but it was not as bad as some of my periods have been. I would describe this period as being like normal period pain. So someone who doesn't have adenomyosis or any other kind of um, reproductive issue, this is what I would do, you know, term normal cramps. The kind that you can just take one or two ibuprofen, that'll stop the pain, hot water bottle, and you're good to go. Um, that's what this period was like, but it didn't completely stop the pain. And given how tired I had been that um, week, month, and how like I really struggled through it, I was 
actually kind of hoping that it was going to be like a miraculous cure, um, but it wasn't. Although having said that, most of the time with contraceptives, if you continue taking them after a few months, they, they increase in their effectiveness each month. So if I'd continue taking it for two or three months, I probably would have seen it get better and better each month. However, because of the fatigue aspect, it was so, so bad. I made the decision that I had to stop and I checked with my Lyme specialist as well and she said that was a good idea and I shouldn't continue on with it given how tired it had made me. And I don't think I'd even realised quite how exhausted I had been until very recently, like last week I was at a, um, last week was International Women's Day, so throughout the week I had like talks and stuff I was doing and I was super super busy, hence the reason there wasn't a video last week as well, um, towards the end of the week. And I was at the train station with my mum after a really long day and she was shattered and I was still like really like, oh it was so exciting, so good, and she looked at me and she said, Bryony, you are so much better since you came off that patch and she actually admitted to me that she'd been really 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 worried about me when I was on the patch because my energy had got so low that she was just convinced that my Lyme disease was relapsing as well um, so I think so having heard her opinion as well having it validated that you know I really was so much worse uh, fatigue wise I'm definitely glad that I made the decision to stop it um, it just didn't work for me and that's probably because it's a combined hormone but having said that I'm really pleased I did try it because I'm, I'm glad I've now tried some form of contraceptive to see if it could manage my period pain and it was a bit better the other thing I did was because I knew that this patch had worked I was more inclined to try another form of patch so uh, on the first day, after a few hours of my period like actually starting, well, I started very late on Thursday, so it wasn't really until Friday, I think. It was a Wednesday or Thursday, something like that, that I actually started properly bleeding. And after, I, uh, it was Thursday evening I started, and then it, Friday was the day I was like properly bleeding throughout the night. Um, the night was much better than it would have usually been. I only woke up once, that's unheard of. Usually I'm up all the time because of the pain. Um, but like the pain was still there this, the next day, so I decided to stick a CBD, which is um, like a hemp extract uh, patch on my stomach and by the end of the day I was in no pain at all so that could have been this could have been the CBD we'll have to see I have some more of those patches so from now on we'll see what the CBD patch was doing whether it was that or whether it was this but this I think definitely helped reduce it although I still was very clotty I, that was what surprised me the most actually I thought that given I wasn't having a proper period that my clots would have reduced quite drastically but they were still pretty much the same um, so that was kind of interesting to see that it didn't stop that side of things but um, and the bleeding was still pretty, like I was still heavy. I expected my periods to like get really light with this thing, but no, it was, I could not tell the difference between that period and my normal period, heavy, heaviness wise or clotting wise. They were like identical. It was just the pain was a little more manageable. So that was something I found really interesting. I wasn't really expecting that at first, but everyone has told me that, you know, it's the more you use it, the lighter they get over time. So yeah, if I, if I was able to stick with it, if I hadn't got so tired, that probably would have happened uh, in the future. But I am really glad that I have come off it now because I have felt my energy levels go shoo, right back up again. Um, particularly, as I, as I said before at the beginning of this video, I think I have now managed to actually like get on top of my Lyme disease and find a way to manage it energy-wise. So it's just my period. And it's, again, that age-old like way up for me of do I want less painful periods but to be exhausted all month or do I want to actually be productive all month and have two days each month where I can't do anything because of the pain in my period. So yeah, in this instance it wasn't good enough and it was too exhausting that it was just not worth it for the month, quite frankly. But as I said before, this is only my experience. It might be completely different for you. I'm sure lots of, I know that lots of people are on the patch actually and they love it, it works really well for them. Um, just in terms of like sticking it on, the Evra patch in particular, I don't know if other patches do it, but certainly with Evra, there's like a stickiness around the edge of it, so if it touches any clothing, it picks up like the lint, so at the beginning it's all nice and skin coloured, but by the end of the week you've got this ring of like black around it because it's just been picking up little fibres from all your clothing. So that's something to bear in mind, it is very visible by the end of the week. And also, the first time I stuck it on my back, I think I might have already said this and that didn't really work, but sticking it on my thighs, my outer thighs, slightly behind as well, that worked really well and I barely noticed it there. So if you are thinking of using the Ever Patch or you are currently using it, that's kind of where I'd recommend. But I also know a lot of people like putting it like up here on their uh, the back of their shoulder. Anyway, I hope you found this review helpful guys. Um, do leave a question down below or a comment if you use the Ever Patch or if you're interested in using Ever or actually any contraceptive patch. And I'm sure other people who use it will be happy to help you out, um, let you know 
like their experiences and you know tell people what yours are because everyone is different like I said I have chosen now not to use birth control anymore but I'm really pleased I did try this because otherwise I would have always wondered would it have made a difference um, but I am going to stop now and go back to trying more natural methods because the other thing I realised, and this is something I forgot to mention, I really hated, I didn't expect this, but I hated not ovulating. Like it really, really bothered me. I knew I wouldn't like it particularly, but I didn't anticipate the utter like horror I felt of like, oh my god, my body's not ovulating. I hated it. And it was such a relief this month when I did ovulate and I was like, oh, it hasn't stopped that so that was interesting as well I was not expecting that but anyway um hope you enjoyed this video guys I hope you found it helpful uh, found it helpful don't forget you can get cloth pads and menstrual cups on my website precious stars up there and uh, let me know what other videos you'd like to see in the coming weeks and I will talk to you guys later bye bye